You keep saying you need to be more uh, to stop being so charitable to a lot of these lefties, but I ironically, but I ironically think it's one of your best traits. I, I have to, and I've had a lot of now. I've had a lot of personal feedback from somebody else that's like counseling me on this. And I'm trying to keep in mind. I have to try to figure out how I'm going to work the charitability thing because one thing that I notice in some debates is that I, I'm running into a bit of a prisoner's dilemma. Um, I'm running into a bit of a prisoner's dilemma with how I do the charitability thing. So. Yesterday, I think I had my my um, my Sam Cedar conversation. In the Sam Cedar conversation, I was trying really, really, really hard to be as understanding and bridge building as possible. Um, I was very gentle in laying out all of my groundwork. I was very gentle in our disagreements. I was very gentle in not pushing him for concessions. Like I tried to be as nice as possible, even when he was saying things that I thought were kind of, no, I won't, I won't say stupid, things that I disagreed with that I could have pushed him on. Um, I didn't buy his Pac-Man like argument of like, oh, well, this is just how I presented it. It's whatever. It's like, bro, you explicitly were agreeing with a guy calling this kid a Nazi patrolman. You explicitly made comments like, um, you know, bag of Skittles, blah, 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 blah. But I was like being so gentle. By the time we came to the end of that conversation, um, I was happy with the end of the first part because I thought that like, even though, um, even though I disagree with him, I could have pushed him more. Like, I think I'm showing that, um, <clears throat> I think I'm showing that I'm, I'm making an effort to be good faith, even though we disagree, I'm not pushing as hard as I can. But then the problem is that this is, a, this is something that I learned. I've learned this a long time ago and I have forgotten it. I don't know why. If somebody wants to pull you into a debate that you're not ready for, you should always say, no, but if you wanna talk about it next time, we can. I need to, I've had to learn this with Lauren sometimes because I'll end up getting yanked around. I was like, fuck, I don't have the data for this right now. But if you wanna talk about this later, I did do, I think I did an okay job of that one of the times here. It was like, okay, well, if you wanna debate about this, we can schedule a future time. Um, Cedar came into that conversation super fucking mad um, about me claiming that he didn't know anything about Citizens United and he, probably did a bunch more reading to like refresh himself on it. And then he decided to go in and his whole goal in the Citizens United part was not to have a discussion on Citizens United, which a lot of you believe, a lot of you got tricked into that. Um, his goal was to just show how much he knew because we didn't even have a discussion on Citizens United. Was the ruling too broad? Should it have been narrow? Was the broad ruling incorrect? Should the Supreme Court ever make a broad ruling? Should the Supreme Court be in the business of overturning prior legislation, if not explicitly asked for by the plaintiffs, et cetera, et cetera? Those are all interesting conversations. We didn't talk about any of that. If you go back and you watch that debate, it's just him constantly saying, come Guzzler, you said I didn't know what this is about. You don't know what this is about. Guzzling buckets of his cum. Guzzle buckets of cum. I would be guzzling buckets of his cum. That I'd be guzzling buckets of his cum. Buckets of cum. You're just going to know that you don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah, I've talked to a ton of lawyers over this, but... And then stating another fact about Citizens United. Well, actually this happened. Well, actually this happened. Well, actually this happened. I don't think I disagreed with much of what he said. Um, I just didn't... Um, it didn't feel like when I heard the phone caller uh, talked to him about the Citizens United. I think it didn't sound like they knew what the case was about. That's what it sounded like to me. Um, and then he screamed at me and shouted the entire time. But the issue was that here was the problem. There were two parts of that debate. The second one relating to Citizens United. I wasn't f f like refreshed on, on uh, Citizens United, like ready to go. I didn't brush up on that before that conversation. I was not ready to have that debate. And he didn't mention it at all in our, in our emails either. Because I emailed him and I said, do you want to talk about Rittenhouse? We set it up. So I wasn't ready for that part of that conversation to go that hard. What He wasn't ready to even have a conversation on it. He just wanted to prove his knowledge. But on the Rittenhouse thing, I went, um, I went very, very, very gently on him. But I realized that he wasn't there for that. He was there to get dunks. So the problem is that I had basically given up the whole part of the argument where I could have completely slaughtered him because his Rittenhouse takes are insane, way more insane than what I let him get away with in that conversation. But I gave up that part of the convo and let him move it into a second part where he was going to posture as aggressively as possible. Um, and it's frustrating because it's in a way for debating, for like debating, like he did a good job at that because he, I'm completely fucked now because now he's pushed me into an area that he specifically brushed up on just to like crucify me here on this past thing. But I let him slide on every stupid thing that he said earlier relating to Rittenhouse. And now I'm like fucked. 
And the problem is because I was the one that had the conciliatory to tone at the beginning of the conversation. Now I look like I've bitched out of the whole convo. So even like the majority of you guys, and I do think it was like probably like 40 or 50% of you guys think that like, wow, Destiny was a huge, like saw people saying I was an asshole in that conversation, that I was being too debatey. Now there was another big thread that said that he was being debatey, but it feels like it was like a 40, 60, 50, 50 split almost in my community of people saying like, oh yeah, like Destiny was so mean. He was like, com he was way too combative. He was trying to st straw man Sam Cedar. It's like, wait, what? No shot. But um, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think because I always think like looking back, like what can I do to avoid those situations? So one is, is I just need to always go pedal to the metal, ultra hard. Um, that's one thing. Um, oh, there were two things, um, but I had a third revelation um, that I understand as well. So the first one is that I should just go pedal to the metal super hard in the beginning, even though you guys will hate me because Sam's a lefty. Um, that's one thing I could have done. Because at the very least then, he would have come off the Rittenhouse part looking horrible. And then for Citizens United, I would have already been in a more combative mood, so we could have gone back and forth on that as well. So number one. Um, number two, a way I could have avoided it was, is if he wanted to have a conversation about Citizens United, I should be like, oh, hold on, I didn't brush up on this at all. If you want to talk about this, like, let's schedule another conversation. I'm not going to talk about this right now. And then boom, I could have cut it off there, which is usually what I do when people want to argue about a topic that we didn't come here to discuss, because I don't know how much you've like prepared for this particular topic. I don't know what you've brushed up and you're ready to argue about. I don't even know what position we disagree on. Like, that's going to be something I need to take a step back and brush up on. Um, the way you were presenting your side in the beginning sounded like you were walking eggshells. Probably nice return. Yeah, I think I deleted my notes for that debate. Fuck. I don't know if I ever showed one stream. But yeah, I'd written out notes and I'd written out quotes and I tried to be like super gentle. Um, the third thing, um, the true reason why that conversation got, um, was so heated. Um, this is something else that's frustrating. And I quoted this as much in my manifesto. When people make the same mistakes I do, you guys will blame me. But when I make the same mistakes other people do, you guys will also blame me. So the reason why that convo is was was kind of fucked from the start is because I technically violated my rule, kind of, by not matching energy with Sam Cedar. Um, I could have been entirely critical of his positions without saying that he would guzzle cum. He might not be somebody that would guzzle the cum of a black person had they murdered somebody. Now, um, I don't know if I would have said that in other words if he wouldn't have been upset, I'm not sure. But it could be the case that he heard me saying things on stream that came off as personal insults, and so he came into my stream fired up, ready to fight over it, when I didn't know that that was gonna be the, um, that that was gonna be the, the tone of the debate. Um, now, the ironic part is that on my subreddit, I think people say as much. They're like, Destiny, of course he was mad. He already said this. Destiny, of course. But the frustrating part, and this is just the reality that I have to live with because my life isn't fair. The, the frustrating part is that when I have very heated debates with people, usually it's because of what they've said about me on Twitter already. But when I do that, you guys will say, Destiny, you can't be mad at him. Like the conversation is starting. I'm like, well, look what this motherfucker's already said about me on Twitter or in other videos. And they're like, that's not, it doesn't matter, Destiny. He's being nice now. Why are you being so hardcore? It's like, well, is there, right? So I, that's kind of a. It's kind of a frustrating thing to, uh... oh, I do show my notes. Oh, these were the notes that I'd written out. I wanted to be so gentle here. And I had videos of his quotes so that he couldn't like walk away from things that he'd said. Um, <clears throat> I had um, facts that I'd written down, like this is stuff related to the Jacob Blake shooting. He didn't care at all about point one. Um, he seemed to not want to engage on point two. He just said Rittenhouse was an asshole. Um, and then on three, he kind of engaged, but not really. Fuck, I should have just, I should have forced consent. No, I shouldn't have. No, I shouldn't have. He was mad because I had already gone hard on him beforehand, and I shouldn't, I should reserve personal attacks for people that have personally attacked me. I should wait on that. Um, you promised not to hold back against Sam after your college debate. He even threw shade at you the next day. Wait, did I? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have then. People always say I'm so aggressive and bad faith towards lefties, though. I try to keep this in mind sometimes, but... Why are you always so gentle with Cedar? Every time you talk to me, you come to this conclusion. I don't know. Because I, I, I have high respect for him. Because I've seen him say things that are really smart, but... <clears throat> 